Imagine living to the ripe age of 100, playing tennis twice a week and defying medical norms. Would you still need those regular cancer screenings? Welcome to a transformative journey into your life expectancy, its role in your healthcare, and why you need to pay attention to it right now. Meet our hypothetical friend, let's call her Jane, a sprightly 76-year-old woman standing at a crossroads of healthcare decisions. She has just been advised by her doctor about another mammogram and reminded of her 10-year-old colonoscopy. The hitch? Jane's age and these tests might not be the best partners. The influential U.S. Preventive Services Task Force recommends screening mammograms for women up to 74, but for those 75 or older, well, the jury is still out. These guidelines from the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force stem from an intricate balance of evidence-based medical findings. At their core, they seek to optimize patient care by outlining when screenings and treatments are most likely to yield significant benefits. However, these are not blanket statements that apply to everyone. They have been crafted keeping the average population health in mind. There may be exceptions, and this is where individual health factors come into play, highlighting the importance of personalized medicine. Colorectal cancer screening is similarly a bit of a gamble for those 76 to 85. But wait, there's more to Jane's story. She's an avid tennis player, she might have heart disease, her parents lived well into their 90s, and she might even smoke. Now all these factors, they change the game. They affect her life expectancy, which impacts whether future screenings could be beneficial or detrimental. This is where the concept of holistic health comes into focus. It's not just about the number of years you've lived, it's also about how you've lived those years. Have you had a sedentary lifestyle or have you been active and sporty like Jane? Have you inherited robust genes that run in your family, or are there hereditary health issues you need to be aware of? Do you have habits, like smoking, that could potentially reduce your life expectancy? Each of these factors carries a certain weight in the grand scheme of your overall health and consequently your life expectancy. Dr. Stephen Woloshin, director of the Center for Medicine and Media at the Dartmouth Institute, says, it doesn't make sense to draw these lines by age. It's age plus other factors that limit your life. This line of thinking isn't restricted to just one doctor. More and more health professionals are recognizing the importance of considering life expectancy when making treatment decisions. Organizations like the American College of Physicians and the American Cancer Society are also beginning to adopt this approach in their screening guidelines, demonstrating a paradigm shift in the medical community. The question arises then, how does Jane know how long she will live? How does anybody know? Let's unveil some data. A 75-year-old has an average life expectancy of 12 years. On the surface, this statistic may seem straightforward, but it's important to remember that life expectancy is an average based on population data. It's a generalized figure that doesn't account for individual variability. As such, life expectancy should be considered as one of many factors when making health decisions. However, Dr. Eric Widera, a geriatrician at the University of California, San Francisco, analyzed census data from 2019 showing stark variation. The least healthy 75-year-olds might have just three years, while those in top health could see another 20. This data starkly showcases the role of personal health in influencing life expectancy. Remembering these figures are not set in stone and one's health can improve or decline based on lifestyle changes, medical treatments, and a myriad of other factors. Pop quiz time. What online tool can you use to estimate your life expectancy? Stick around for the answer and trust me, you'll want to know this. However, it's important to note that all these predictions are averages and can't pinpoint individual life expectancy. But just like doctors use risk calculators to decide whether to prescribe drugs to prevent osteoporosis or heart disease, you can use online tools for rough estimates. Now our friend Jane, as a healthy, active, non-smoker, using the e-prognosis tool, might find her extended life expectancy still makes mammography a reasonable choice. But if she were a smoker with lung disease and diabetes, the story changes. Here, we encounter an important concept called competing mortality. This is the possibility that an individual might die from another cause before the disease being screened for even becomes a problem. In Jane's second scenario, where she has multiple health issues, there's a greater chance of these illnesses causing her death before breast cancer, even if it were present. Understanding competing mortality helps to avoid unnecessary treatments and focus on the most pressing health issues. Are you following us on this roller coaster of health decisions and life expectancy? Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and check the description box for some useful resources.
let's dive deeper. By examining life expectancy, we can avoid over or under treatment in seniors. Yes, some might argue that they don't want to stop screenings, even when data shows they're no longer helpful. And we respect that. Life expectancy is a guide, not a limit on medical care. For those seeking to make health decisions on evidence-based calculations, considering life expectancy provides a meaningful context. It anchors you, guiding you to focus on what's truly important instead of being frightened by the latest health scare in the news. And that is precisely why tools like ePrognosis and others can be helpful. They offer an evidence-based approach to estimate your life expectancy based on various factors, providing an insight into how long you might live given your current health and lifestyle. Of course, these are estimates and not exact predictions, but they can serve as a useful guide for you and your healthcare providers to make informed decisions about your health. Remember, these tools are meant to be a jumping off point for conversations with your medical providers. You can make much more informed decisions, but you need some help. This help often comes in the form of a detailed discussion with your healthcare provider. It's crucial to understand that these online tools, while helpful, should not replace the expertise of a medical professional. They are aids to help you gather more information, stimulate conversation, and guide your queries when speaking with your doctor. Ultimately, it's this partnership between you and your healthcare provider, supplemented by these online resources, that will ensure your health decisions are as informed and personalized as possible. Oh, and the answer to our trivia question is ePrognosis. Before you rush off, check out our next video to prepare for a long, healthy life ahead. Stay informed, stay healthy, and live your best life.